how a solar hot water heating system works, what are the basic components and how each of the component will function. Now here we have a evacuated tube collector based system. This is a 150 litre capacity system. So as we've discussed, there are three basic components. One is the collector. This is a evacuated tube collector. This tube is known as the evacuated tube. The second most important component is the tank. This is a hot dip galvanized tank. It is used for storing the hot water. And the third is the structure. The structure is basically bringing the two together and making the system stand on your roof. So let's come to the collector first. As we have discussed, this is an evacuated tube. It's basically a glass in glass tube com uh, combination with a vacuum layer in between the two tubes. This ensures that the tube works like a thermos itself and has a very, very low heat loss coefficient. That means even in freezing conditions, the water inside the tube will never freeze. This, this tube has got a triple layer coating. It's known as a selective coating. And the water from the tank is actually filled in the tubes as well. And once the sunlight starts falling on the tube, the water starts getting heated and a natural thermosiphon cycle is set up. That means water, when it starts getting heated in the tubes, will slowly start to rise and go into the tank and will be replaced by the co cooler water in the tank, which will come and take its place in the tube. And in turn, it will also start getting heated and a circulation will be set up. This circulation is known as natural thermosiphon. Now this cycle will continue till the sun is shining and by evening, this system will have 150 liters of hot water in the storage tank. Now coming to the tank, as I said, this is a hot dip galvanized tank. It is specifically designed for use in very, very hard water conditions. This tank is a non-pressurized tank. That means if your cold water supply is non-pressurized, you can easily use this tank and store hot water in it. The tank is insulated with polyurethane foam and this ensures that water stays hot in the tank overnight and the temperature loss is less than 3 degrees over an extended period of 16 to 18 hours. This ensures that by evening when the water is heated to 60 or 65 degrees, the next morning when you want to use water from the tank, it is already at 60 or slightly less than 60 degree temperature, ensuring that you get the required hot water that you want. Now, if you look at the different inlet outlet connections and other connections on the tank, you will see that you have a cold water inlet, you have a sacrificial anode on this side and you have the manufacturer's nameplate specifying the model, the production number and all other relevant details which will help you in getting your warranty and everything registered. Now the cold water inlet is where the inlet pipe from your cold water tank supply is connected and the cold water will come into the system from this inlet. The sacrificial anode that you see on this side is basically uh, aluminium or magnesium rod. So I'll remove it here so you can have a closer look at it. So it's basically a small rod which will be corroded when it comes in contact with hard water resulting in the protection of the tank itself. So once the rod is completely consumed, only after that the hard water will start affecting the inner tank. But since the inner tank is also hot dip galvanized, the effect of hard water on it will be minimum. However, to ensure a very, very long life of this system, the basic maintenance that you need to do for any of such systems is that you have to periodically keep on checking the sacrificial anode, keep on checking its length and when it is once it is completely consumed, make sure that you replace it with a new one. It is not a very expensive component and if you keep on maintaining it properly, the system will definitely perform fantastically for a period of 15 plus years. Now we'll move on to the other side and see what sort of connections are present over there. Now on this side, you can see that there's a hot water outlet. This is the outlet from where the hot water distribution piping will be go going to your points of usage. That is to your bathrooms and kitchen and any other areas where you wish hot water to be delivered. The water that is stored in the tank <coughs> will come out of the hot water outlet and an equivalent amount of cold water will then enter into the tank, making sure that the tank is always filled with water completely. Another portion that you see over here is the backup heater coil socket. So as we have discussed, 
in monsoons or in inclement weather conditions when there is no sunlight falling on the system to heat the water, you can always put in an electrical backup heating coil into this tank and use it to heat the water and make sure that you have continuous hot water supply. Now this is a standard size socket provided over here which will match any 3 kilowatt electrical heater that is readily available in the market along with a thermostat. So the only cost that comes into the equation is the cost of the electrical heater which you have to procure and put it in and connect it to a power supply. So now coming to the maintenance aspects of this system, the only active maintenance that is required by you is cleaning the tubes regularly. If you keep on cleaning the tubes regularly, it will ensure that the maximum possible sunlight is falling on the inner surface of the tube and you are getting the best quality performance and best hot water generation from this system over an extended period of time. One important thing that you have to keep in mind while cleaning the tubes is that either clean them early in the morning or late in the evening. This will ensure that the tube surface is cleaned properly and there is no residue or stain marks remaining on the tube which will enhance the optical efficiency of the tube further. Now, as I said earlier, this is a 150 litre capacity system. So this will be sufficient for around 4 to 6 people to meet their hot water requirements daily. So I hope that you have got a basic idea about a solar hot water system, the ETC hot water system, what are the main components, how do they function and everything. So please go out and buy one. This will make sure that you get the cheapest source of heat in your house and continue to save money over an extended period of time. Thank you. So friends, hope you like the video. Do share this information with others also and don't forget to subscribe our channel as we will be bringing more information on solar products, their developments and government policies and procedures related to them. Solar industry experts are also coming on this channel to share their knowledge and experience. You can watch their videos and enhance your skills. Once again, we would like to thank Axon Solar for supporting us in making this informative video on solar water heaters. You can contact them directly for more information. The contact details of Axon Solar is on the screen as well as given in the description of this video. Thank you for watching.